Christ, you are anointed one by the Spirit, ordained by God. You Christ, you are the eternal King who came gentle to us a babe. Now you reign in majesty over all things because you came and you got and keep us in freedom you won for us govern us by your word still and you guard us and keep us in
What is my only comfort? Not a hair can fall. Bless the will of my father. Whispers that it should end. What is my only comfort that he has set me free? Good morning, church. We are excited to be with you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather to worship God. And as we do that, we have so much to be thankful for. 
signs of things opening up in our province, the beautiful weather, the faithfulness of God, the, the gifts that are, are able to bring our, our service to you in your homes this morning. And as we uh, worship, we want to bring uh, two things of prayer for you this morning and a few announcements this morning. Uh, we want to offer our, our condolences to Betty Ruhlveld, uh whose mom passed away uh, yesterday or on Friday. And we also want to uh, remember the Clements family as Francis' uncle also uh, passed away. So we want to remember those families later on in our service and prayer this morning. But we also uh, want to give thanks for the ministry that's taking place. Uh, Monday night, our GEMS group is going to continue to meet via Zoom on Wednesday morning. Uh, we are going to have our coffee social where we can gather together and grab a cup of coffee or tea and just see each other's faces and connect. Wednesday night, our uh, insight group is going to meet and they are going to have a, a study and some conversation and some games. And Thursday, Thursday evening, we have our Zoom devotional study. So ministry is taking place in some real uh, visible ways. And if uh, you need information about any of those, uh, you can just uh, e email uh, myself, Pastor Doug, at community-church.ca or, or Pastor Jack, uh, at Pastor Jack uh, com at community-church.ca as well. And we can give you more information about that. And as we meet this morning, Council wants you to know that uh, we are meeting regularly to discuss the ongoing work of the church. And we are meeting for prayer and we are excited about what's happening, not only in those ministries, but we have this unique opportunity where we are partnering with Genesis Place in some really neat ways. Uh, we're excited uh, for the ministry that we can do with Pastor Jack over there. Uh, we're excited for the meals that are being made, masks that are being made. Others of you and those outside of our church community have dropped off masks. And masks have not only gone to Genesis Place, they've gone to one of the uh, local Christian Horizons homes. So if you're making those, we have places that we can distribute those to on your behalf to protect not only residents of uh, group homes or, or buildings, but also to help protect some of our frontline workers. And so we're thankful for the ministry that's taking place. And as we speak of that ministry, we speak of how God wants to speak to us this morning. Would you bow with me in a moment of prayer? Oh God, it is good to be together with your people. It, it is good for modern technology to be available that in the uh, quietness of our own homes that we're able to still unite as a family and to uh, worship you. And so Lord, as we give you uh, ourselves this morning in our act of worship, we pray that you would be honored. We pray that as a community, we would be drawn closer to you, to each other, and to the calling that you've laid out for us. And so, Lord, we invite you into not only our homes, but into ourselves. And we pray that you would speak and that you would move. And that all we do here this morning would be honoring to your name. In your name we pray. Amen. People of God, our living, our gracious, our ascended Savior, greet you with these words this morning. May grace, mercy, and love be yours in exceeding abundance to the glory of God. Amen. Let's sing together. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, a real blessing and uh, delight to uh, be here to uh, help lead in worship this morning. And uh, today, as we worship, let's declare with the psalmist who writes in Psalm 104, praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. This is a beautiful psalm that speaks to God's uh, creation. And um, on this beautiful Sunday morning, uh, uh, it's just a, such a wonderful reminder for us all that uh, God uh, created all of what we see. And he uh, is the creator of all. So let's sing of our love for our creator king. 
uh, with in Christ alone and the stand, our God in whom we find salvation. Let's raise our hearts and our voices in praise.
that uh, just a uh, such a strong declaration of um, uh, us giving ourselves to to Jesus and uh, how can we not when he has done so much for us wanted to um, share a little other thought that uh, came to mind uh, for me uh, and it ties into what um, uh, what our, our scripture passage for this week is is talking about in terms of being blessed. And uh, what does it mean to be blessed? Uh, it's been pretty hard some days uh, to feel blessed. Um, I know for myself, uh, uh, this last month and a half uh, has been quite uh, unlike anything that I've ever gone through. And I'm sure we all can say the same thing. Uh, and especially in those early days of the pandemic when uh, there just seemed to be so much out of control. So much was changing by the minute. For those of us that work in healthcare, it, uh, um, it truly has been uh, 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 just, it's hard to even describe the words uh, or to provide the words that really describe what, it, uh, what it's been like. And I know we all have our, all of our experiences of what, um, what, what we've gone through and, and uh, maybe struggling a little bit to find, uh, find those blessings and to feel that we are blessed. But, uh, uh, you know, when you stop and you think um, how God has got us through to this point and he's always been there, like we saying, you stood before creation. Uh, he's always been there. He always will be there. And uh, uh, it reminded me um, that one of the greatest blessings uh, that, uh, that we've seen is, is what it means to be in community. And that community isn't bounded by uh, the walls of a building. But uh, the community is much broader than that. And for those of you who read the Today devotional, um, uh, you'll know that this month the focus is on community. And I don't think that uh, uh, that's a coincidence at all. God had this all in mind uh, when, when topics were being put together. And um, I'd like to just share a little excerpt from today's reading uh, that I really feel speaks to us as a church community. And it says, community isn't about being in the same place with the same people all the time, but it is about having a place to belong so that no matter where we go, we always have a place to return to, a place where we are known, supported, and loved. We can share where we have been and what we have done, and we can rest from the difficulties of life. And I think that is just a beautiful picture of what the church is, what our church is, what our church community is. And um, um, I hope it, uh, it speaks to you as well. And as we sing all to us, my prayer is that you'll feel the presence of the Spirit connecting us together as we worship.
Jesus, you are all to us, and we just come to you today and every day praising you for who you are and how you work in our lives. And may you be given all the honor, glory, and praise. Amen. This morning, we have the joy of opening God's Word this morning. If you have a Bible with you, we encourage you to turn to uh, the Old Testament, to the book of Psalms, to Psalm chapter 1. That's Psalm chapter 1. Hear the Word of the Lord. I encourage you to keep your Bibles open. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. On his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yieldeth fruit in season, and whose leaves does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so with the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Kevin Smith provides some exciting insights into this passage. And what I love about Psalm 1 is that whether you are a verbal learner or you're a visual learner, Psalm 1 really comes alive. Reading these words reminds me of the only fictional writer that I actually enjoy. Most of the time, I, I find fiction to, to, to be rubbish reading. It's just not something I like to read. But Dan Brown, whose uh, worst book out of his writing is The Da Vinci Code, and yet the most famous book, writes in such a way that when you begin to open his books, the characters come alive. You, you can picture what they look like. The scenes you can picture coming to life as if they were already on the screen. And so when those books have been put to movies, much like The Da Vinci Code or, or Angels and Demons or The Lost Symbol, it's not all that far from what you thought it would look like. So too it is with the psalm before us. The first picture that uh, the psalmist gives us is streams picture or by streams of water. Now picture this morning where this is taking place. What is the context? What is the background? background? What is the landscape uh, literally that is before us? It's Israel. It's dry, it's dusty, it's arid. It is not the place where you would expect a tree to grow. A tree planted by streams of water were not all that common. They were often planted by individuals and when they planted them, they planted rows of trees. And so when you surveyed the landscape in this dry, dusty, arid, uh, context, the trees that are before you would stand out. So too it is for the believer, for the one who is in Christ. The psalmist says, blessed is the man. Notice it doesn't say blessed is the community. Blessed are they. But when the psalmist writes, blessed is the man or, or the woman, you could really translate it, blessed is the person who walks in the way of the Lord. They are like a tree planted by streams of living water. What does he mean? He means that those who are following Christ, who are growing in the likeness of Christ, who are seeking to be the representation who love their neighbor, who pray for those who persecute them, who are the blessed are they that Scripture talks about. 
Those that are loving, joyful, peaceful, kind, patient, good, gentle, and and filled with self-control stand out in a culture today that lives for self. Blessed is the one who seeks God, who seeks to be a difference maker in the world. Ever met somebody like that? Who's like a tree planted by streams of living water? Whose sole focus is to follow God that when you look at him, you know there's something different about him. There's something contagious about their personality. That's what the psalmist is beginning to get at. But then he also says, notice the tree planted by living water. What happens to that tree? That tree is rooted, it is grounded, because its roots need to go down deeper to get water and nourishment and sustenance. So when the storms come, when the sandstorms come, when the the difficulties in life come, what happens to the tree planted by living water? That is, what happens to the believer who is rooted and grounded in Christ? They are stable. They are secure. They are rooted. They are prepared for the storm. There's one picture in our passage, but there is another passage or picture And it doesn't matter how young or old you are. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, whether you're working or you're retired, whether you're educated or or not as educated as others. And he uses the picture of chaff. The harvest would have just taken place. The grain would have been on the ground and it would have dried. And the farmer would have grabbed probably with something like a pitchfork and would have shaken it up and down. And the grain, because it's heavier, falls to the ground. But the chaff, because it is lighter, doesn't fall. And as the the farmer is doing that during the harvest, it begins to blow away. And at some point in the text, we feel the tension, don't we? We feel the tension in our soul. And yet we know we have a relationship with Christ. We know that we're forgiven. We know that we're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. And yet sometimes we don't feel like that tree, like that tree planted by living water. As if we really stand out for Christ or that we're really rooted and grounded and secure, that that, that our our faith is evident in in the way we live. And yet notice the text. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or, or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. On his law, he meditates day and night. He or she or the person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its, its fruit in season, and whose leaves do not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed is the one who seeks the heart of God. And then he gives you advice to how you can be rooted and secure and grounded how you can be that person who stands out in the world for God. And notice what he says. If you've got your Bibles open, keep them open. He uses the word walk. Walk has the idea of coming alongside of, partnering with. It is a casual movement, and yet it is not a full outright commitment. And then he moves it on. And he talks about standing. There is a a deliberate choice. There is an intentionality. There there is a deepness in in what it's saying. And then he moves on and he says, not only do they walk, but they stand 
and they sit in the place of those who are not rooted or, or grounded or, or secure or are in Christ. It is a binding together. It, it, it is a, a union. Here the psalmist is minding us to be careful of the relationships that we build with others. Let me give you an example from the Old Testament. If you've got your Bible open, flip over to Genesis chapter 13. In Genesis chapter 13, we get that passage where uh, Abraham and Lot are beginning to, uh, to go separate ways. And here's how it begins. Verse 11. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company and begin to notice what happens. Abraham continues to walk with God. Lot begins to align himself with people who are not in the way of the Lord, people whose lifestyles are, are not that way. And so he's walking. There is a coming alongside it, but there's not an intentionality yet. Drop down to verse 12 and 13. Abraham lived in the land of Canaan, well, Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tents near Sodom. Now, the men of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. Now, notice what happens. Lot makes an intentionality of not only uh, walking, but standing, coming alongside, of partnering, relation, building a relationship with those who are going to have an impact on his life. And then jump ahead to chapter 19, the first verse. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening and Lot was setting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up, he met them, he bowed down his face to the ground. He walked, he stood, and he sat. Be careful, the scriptures are telling us, of those who you have a relationship with. Those that you build a relationship can either do that for good or for bad. Surround yourself with people who are, are filled with lies and deceit and that will probably become part of your pattern. Surround yourselves who's, with those whose desire is pleasure and wealth. And that will become part of your story. Surround yourselves with people you can fill in the blank. And watch how that becomes part of your story. I think of that great example of a story that most of us might know. It's a story of Solomon. Or sorry, of Samson. And Samson uh, was called by God. He was walking in the lay of the Lord. And God had given him extraordinary strength, that he was able to do great things. But what does he do? His eyes go towards a Philistine woman, and he desires to pursue her. Not only does he desire to pursue her, but he ends up marrying her. And what happens? She wants to know the secret to his strength so that she could tell the Philistines and it can be taken away and it would ultimately end Samson's life. And eventually he tells her and he is bound and his eyes are pulled out. And eventually as he takes down the, the building, his life is taken. But surround yourselves with people who are good and kind and gracious and watch how that takes place or develops in your life. Surround yourselves with people who seek first the kingdom of God and watch how that places in your life. Surround yourself with people who are generous and kind and loving and watch how those attributes surround yourselves with people who desire to practice love, joy, peace, patience, guidance, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. And watch how that begins to take place in your life. So blessed is the man, our passage says, who is like a tree planted by streams of living water. People of God, if we want to be like that tree standing out for God, 
The question is, is who in our story or the people in our story, are they drawing us closer to God or are they pulling us farther away from God? Be careful in those to whom you hang around with. That's the first thing he tells us. And the second is this. Pick it up in verse two. But his delight is the law of the Lord. On his law, he meditates both day and night. Imagine if we spent as much time meditating on God's word as we do surveying our relationships, what it could do for our walk with God, for the assurance that we are his, for, for the comfort and the strength that we need in our story, for the depth of God's word taking place in our lives. As he's using that word about meditating on the word of God, he's actually giving you a picture and it's not necessarily a pretty picture. A number of commentators have pointed out that he gives the illustration of a cow chewing its cud. Now, if you know anything, or if you've worked on a farm, you know that when a cow chews its food, its stomach isn't able to, uh, because of the enzymes, uh, absorb all the food at once. So what happens is they chew their food, they regurgitate it, they chew it again and they swallow it, they regurgitate it, and they do this a number of times until it breaks down enough that their body is able to take the, the nourishment that they have just eaten. What if with that kind of intensity, we absorbed the word of God? What if this morning, as we have read from Psalm 1, you've allowed it to, to come through your heart and your mind and your soul and maybe after we're done, you'll speak about it with those who are in your house. And then maybe this afternoon, if you have some quiet time, you reread the passage. Maybe you took some notes, so you regurgitated it by, by writing down some notes so that you're able to absorb all that it is. And then maybe tonight, before you go to bed, you did the same thing with the passage and that it's allowed to resonate in your being. What if we had that kind of intentionality to the word of God? Now the question is, is how do I do it? Well, I like what Smith points out. He gives us three practical applications that I wanna play with in the last few moments this morning. The first is, you gotta find yourself a Bible, a translation. Now, don't get a paraphrase. That's a man's interpretation of the Bible. They're useful to go alongside of a translation, but find a translation that works for you. One that is easy to read, and two, one that is fairly accurate. Now, if you're looking for uh, some advice here, if you're looking for readability, a translation that is easy to read, the NIV is one of the easier translations to read. If you're looking for uh, somewhat of a, of a better, uh, more literal translation to the original, the uh, New American Standard Bible, or the NASB, is a great place to start. But grab a Bible that you can find yourself comfortable reading and understanding so that when you sit down, you can absorb the Word of God. The second is this. <clears throat> if we're going to meditate on God's Word, you need to find a place that works for you. I know for my father, it was every night, he would kneel down at the side of his bed and he would read the word and there you could find him praying. My uncle, I, I remember hearing it from him that the only place that he could find peace and quiet was in the bathroom. And so it's there that he found the opportunity to read and quietly spend time with God. For me, it's here at my church office. It, it, is, it, it is a break, it is a place where there are very little distractions and I'm able to do it. What is that place for you? The third point is, get ready for God to speak. Maybe for you this works, but to grab some paper and a pen, and as you're reading the passage, or maybe it's a journal, uh, write down and ask yourself, what might God be saying to, to me this morning? What might I need to hear? What truth is it that I, I need to claim and begin to write it down so you can 
reflect upon it. And then just spend time with God. Don't rush it. Because the Bible tells us that when we seek God, we will find him. And my hope and, and my prayer this morning is that for each of us, we would be like a tree planted by water that stands out in our culture that when people look at you and I, they say, there's something different about those people that go to community church. And that our faith would get rooted and secure as we grow in our walk with God. So this week, what do you do? Ask you about your relationships this morning. Are the relationships that we have pulling us closer to God or pulling us away from God? And the second is this. How will you spend time with God? Because he longs to meet you. And as you read and you meditate on his word, you will become like a tree planted by living water. You will be secure and stable and you'll become confident in the hope that is ours because of the risen Christ. And together, we can be that witness to the world of the amazing love of God. Amen. Let's pray together. As we gather this morning, God, we gather this morning to meet you. And we hunger and we thirst for you. And so we ask this morning, O risen Christ, that through the power of your spirit, you would move in our story this morning. And that we would sing for joy in our remaining two songs of the hope that is ours of the forgiveness of sin, of the assurance that you are with us. And that our hope would be anchored and rooted even more this morning than it was before we started. And that the fruit of our lives would speak deeply into our culture. We give you thanks for the opportunity to do that. We thank you for the opportunity that we had this week, Lord, through masks that were dropped off. And we were able to drop off at one of the Christian Horizon homes. We thank you for the meals that are being made. And Lord, many of them going over to the Genesis Place apartment buildings and partnering with Pastor Jack and, and our ministry to be the hands and the feet of Jesus in real, tangible, and practical ways. And we thank you for that opportunity to, to love on the apartment buildings that are right next to us. And so, Lord, we pray that you would bless the work of Pastor Jack over there. We pray that you would be with, with, with our, our leadership, Lord, our, our, our consistory, our council, that you would give them wisdom during this time. We thank you for their uh, biweekly gathering, or sorry, bimonthly uh, gatherings, and their, their prayers and they're ongoing reaching out into our community. We thank you that we are a family of faith. And so, Lord, we want to, to pray for Betty and her family, Lord, as they mourn the loss of her mom. We pray that you would comfort them. We pray that you would strengthen them. We pray that you would refresh them. And, Lord, we, we thank you for the assurance of eternal life. And we, Lord, we pray that you would walk with them as they prepare for a graveside service. We pray that you would be near to them and that the story of her faith would carry on. Lord, we pray for, for Harry, for Francis' uncle, Lord. We pray that you would be with, with Francis' family and, and the family over in Holland, Lord, and that you would comfort them and that you would strengthen them, that you would sustain them and refresh them as they too prepare for a service. Lord, would you give them all that they stand in need of? As these two families be able to celebrate the lives of their loved ones and the legacies that they leave behind. We thank you for our opportunity this morning to partner with New Ground in our offering. 
We pray that you would bless their work and, and, and their ministry. And Lord, we thank you for the newness of the day, for the beauty of the sun that is shining before us. And we pray that our story would be refreshed and that we would be ready to go out with joy this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Our offering, if you were with us this morning, would be for New Ground Ministry, formerly known as Operation Manna. And if you would like to partner with us in our ongoing work or in the work of Operation Manna, there are a number of ways that you can do that. You can do that by mailing uh, an offering to our church, and uh, that information is in the description uh, section uh, of our uh, YouTube channel. There's also the opportunity to, to give through uh, the Bridge app, or there's a link also in the description section. There is pre-authorized giving. If you would like to be a part of us being the hands and the feet of Jesus, we would be glad to partner with you as we seek not only through their financial gifts, but through food and masks and other tangible ways to shine the love of Jesus in this time. Thank you for those of you who have already partnered with us and are partnering with us. It's exciting to see what God is doing. We're gonna to continue to sing and we're gonna invite the worship team back up. As we sing uh, our next song, Blessed, uh, I think it uh, um, fits so well into what, uh, what we've just heard. And um, as many of you know, uh, when Marlene and I uh, select songs for worship, we uh, do our very best to try to, to tie everything in together. Um, but uh, just with, uh, with the way everything has been happening over these last few weeks, we... Um, uh, didn't have as much of the details to help us with song selection, but uh, God works time and time again to, to just pull everything together. And uh, this song uh, is based on Psalm 84, where we hear of the psalmist uh, uh, you know, praising God through his exclamation of the dwelling place of, of our Lord Almighty and how our soul yearns and faints for the courts of the Lord and we cry out for the living God and that blessed are those who dwell in your house, they are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on you. And we go from strength to strength till we appear before you and asking God to hear our prayer, to listen to us, to look on favor with us because better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. And it is so true, it's uh, so much more better to be in the presence of our Lord. Um, and uh, the psalm concludes with, Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. So it ties so well into what we've just heard from Psalm 1. So as we sing, may you indeed feel that blessing of God pouring out on you.
People of God, our hope and our prayer is this week that you would grow like a tree planted by the water. And as you do, people of God, receive God's blessing. Grow in the grace, in the riches, in the depth of the love of God. Walk in the counsel of the righteous. Dig deep into the word of God so that you may bloom and be a radiant example. And may his spirit live and abide and move in your story as together we make a difference for Christ in this world.
And our hope and our prayer is that you have a blessed Sunday and you get a chance in, in a safe, social distancing way just to enjoy the beauty of the day. And our hope and our prayer is that you have a great week and we will uh, see you uh, next Sunday at 10 o'clock. Take care and God bless.